Hello everybody, so uh, I am going to discuss about uh, celebration recipes in this part. What I have noticed that uh, you know celebration has become so important uh, for children that uh, every other week children are invited to birthday parties. Now this is primarily for little bit older children but even toddlers are invited to a lot of these birthday parties and what we have experienced that uh, most of the time uh, the celebration parties have so much of junk food actually you know. I can understand if a child is attending. A celebration party once every kind of few weeks or maybe once a month or two you know that's a different story but here like lot of time what I see is many many children they attend uh, you know uh, on normal uh, days or normal year they attend at least 10 to 12 to sometimes 15 birthday parties you know and this is true even in a school celebration uh, because even in school celebration what happens when a child has uh, their birthday they bring some chocolate they bring some cookies they bring some biscuit and they distribute to other children and here what happens uh, unfortunately the children you know they kind of they feel that this is a positive reinforcement that if you are happy you have to eat sweet. So that is you know I am kind of a little bit against that uh, uh, fundamental that why should you treat a child uh, for some happy event with sweet why not something which is healthy right. So uh, you were trying to kind of change this mindset and uh, what I recommend is that whenever there is a celebration uh, as parents we need to encourage healthy recipes on those celebrations starting from your own home. You know even if you have a birthday party at home think of more like a you know either carrot cake or something not adding too much of this uh, all purpose flour or maida, uh, avoid sugar you know you can add so many other natural uh, sweet products which, which are available like for example date you can use or you can use a banana or any of those uh, sweet fruit as as a celebration menu not on a or not on a regular basis but just in a celebration menu. So here we have created some of these recipes uh, we have part 1 and part 2 uh, and I do acknowledge Dr. Rekha Harish uh, she is from Indian Academy of Pediatrics and she had encouraged us to create this menu for children uh, you know uh, for celebration uh, parties. Uh, another thing which I do recommend is suppose if children get any of these cookies or candies biscuits or chocolates from school uh, say if uh, somebody gave it to them because of their birthdays you ask them to bring it home you know and tell them to save it for say every Sunday or maybe you can decide one day they can save it in the refrigerator they can put it in one, uh, one box uh, encourage them to have it just once a week. What happens is when they wait for that uh, for the chocolate lot of time what happens they they forget you know once they forget they they tend to kind of get de addicted from the sweet taste and then they don't ask for it and then even though later on if they get some chocolate they will realize it's so sweet you know they will come and tell you that mom this is so sweet I don't like it you know. So try to inculcate those habits in children uh, to get them off this sugar addiction. Uh, sugar addiction is so kind of rampant in our children and it's, it's very very unfortunate. So as you can see from all our recipes you know we have not added uh, sugar or jaggery in uh, regular complementary foods but even in celebration party uh, we haven't added sugar or jaggery at all in any of our uh, uh, recipes. Uh, we have added some probably dates or banana or some of those sweet uh, uh, fruits or you know dry fruits uh, but again this is a celebration menu so on a, on a regular basis I do not uh, recommend adding too many of the sweet fruits dry fruits because uh, those are very high in fructose and fructose does cause uh, fatty liver it does have uh, a repercussion you know for metabolic health and we want to make sure that our children when they are growing up they do not get high triglyceride level they do not get pre-diabetic uh, just in Gujarat uh, CNS report says 20% children are pre-diabetic and these are children between 5 to 9 years of age 
ok. Now this 5 to 9 years of age if these children are getting uh, pre-diabetes that means it started early on, it did not start a year ago, 2 years ago, it started probably from birth you know. So you want to make sure that our children get breast milk ok which will prevent uh, uh, you know or help with uh, decreasing diabetes and blood pressure later on and then at 6 months you start food which is uh, extremely healthy, uh, nutrient dense, uh, no sugar, no jaggery and even uh, between 1 to 2 years of age you want to encourage children to have healthy food and even if they go to celebration party th you want to create that healthy uh, you know healthy mindset in a child that they would only select healthy food out of that you know. So that would start from actually parents, that would start from family. So if child sees that mother and father are only selecting healthy food from say if they go out for dinner, if they are going out for you know birthday parties or any kind of marriage parties, children would follow that. Okay. So, you know for a healthy child you need to have healthy family. Okay. So uh, that is what this uh, kind of tutorial is about. Uh, we have created two celebration uh, tutorials and enjoy and make it and uh, you know let me know how you find all the recipes. Thank you. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on delicious recipes for kids parties. In this tutorial we will learn about points to consider while preparing children's meals. Preparation of some healthy vegetarian recipes for them. Childhood is a period of rapid growth and development. Both physical and mental development takes place during this period. Hence, it is important that children should consume adequate nutrients. They should be encouraged to eat healthy foods from a young age. Their diet should be nutrient dense covering all the food groups. The meals should be colorful and appealing to them. We will now see some delicious healthy recipes which can be given to children. The first recipe is tangy fox nuts bhel. The ingredients required to make this recipe are 3 4 cup fox nuts, 1 4 cup chopped tomatoes, 1 4 cup chopped onion, 2 tablespoons chopped raw mango, 2 tablespoons roasted peanuts, 2 tablespoons lemon juice, 2 tablespoons of washed coriander leaves. You will also need half teaspoon chaat masala, half teaspoon red chilli powder. Take salt according to your taste. Procedure Dry roast the fox nuts in a pan on medium flame until they become crunchy. Once roasted, remove them from the pan and let it cool down for a few minutes. Add the rest of the ingredients to it one by one. Mix everything well and serve. The next recipe is Paneer Kebab. Ingredients required for this recipe are 50 grams or 2 tablespoons of grated paneer, 100 grams or 4 tablespoons of curd, half chopped onion, half chopped capsicum, handful of washed coriander leaves, 2 tablespoons of roasted semolina. Spices required to make this recipe are 1 4 teaspoon cumin powder, 1 4 teaspoon red chilli powder, 1 4 teaspoon pepper powder. You will also need 2 tablespoons of oil or ghee and salt according to taste. Procedure For this recipe we need thick curd. For this, put the curd in a strainer and place a bowl beneath it. Cover and keep it aside for 2 to 3 hours. 
Transfer the thick curd from the strainer to a bowl. Add chopped vegetables, grated paneer and spices into it. Mix everything well and make round kebabs. Coat it in roasted semolina from all sides. Keep these kebabs in the refrigerator for 20 to 30 minutes. Heat oil in a pan and shallow fry the kebabs. Cook on medium flame on both sides until they turn light golden brown. Paneer kebabs are ready. Our third recipe is spinach drink. To make this recipe, you will need half cup or handful of washed spinach, one small banana, half apple, one and a half tablespoon curd. Procedure Boil one glass of water in a vessel. Once the water boils, add the spinach and cook for a minute. Drain the water and keep the spinach aside to cool. Wash, peel and chop the fruits. Add the chopped fruits, spinach and curd to a mixer jar. Grind this into a smooth paste. You can add one fourth cup of water to adjust the consistency. Transfer this into a glass and serve. You can even garnish it with some grated apples. The last recipe is Green Gram Wrap. To make this recipe, you will need 30 grams or half cup of green gram, 4 to 5 pieces of paneer, 2 tablespoons curd, half sliced carrot, 1 small sliced onion, half sliced capsicum. You will also need handful of shredded cabbage, 1 green chilli, pinch of turmeric, 1 fourth teaspoon chilli powder, salt to taste, 2 teaspoons of oil. Procedure Wash and soak green gram overnight. Drain the water and transfer it into a mixer jar. Grind it into a smooth batter by adding a green chilli and half a glass of water. Transfer this batter into a bowl. Add salt and mix well. Keep this aside for later use. I will now tell you how to make the filling. In a bowl, add 2 tablespoons curd and whisk until smooth. To this add turmeric, chilli powder and salt. Mix everything well and add paneer pieces. Coat the pieces well. Keep this aside for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, heat oil on a pan. Shallow fry the paneer pieces until they turn golden. Keep this aside to cool. Simultaneously, heat 1 teaspoon of oil in a pan. Add all the chopped vegetables. Fry these vegetables for 5 to 10 minutes until they turn soft. Add a pinch of salt and remove from heat. Remember not to add salt in the beginning, else the vegetables will become soggy. Keep this aside for later use. We will now see how to make a wrap. Heat oil in a pan. Pour one spoonful of batter that we had prepared earlier. Spread the batter uniformly like a dosa. Cook until both sides are cooked. This will take 3 to 4 minutes. Transfer the prepared dosa onto a plate. Place the fried vegetables and paneer pieces on the dosa. Roll the dosa and serve hot. 
All these recipes are rich in protein, good fats, calcium, folate and magnesium. They are also rich in iron, potassium and phosphorus. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you for joining. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on nutritious vegetarian recipes for kids parties. In this tutorial, we will learn about importance of good nutrition, preparation of some healthy recipes good nutrition during childhood is very important this is a phase of rapid growth and development both physical and mental development takes place during this period it is necessary to encourage children to eat healthy food healthy food should be eaten during regular days celebrations and parties too. For example, during birthdays, picnics, get-togethers, etc. During such celebrations, children often eat junk food. They may get addicted to it and ask for the same on a regular basis. Hence, it is best to avoid junk foods in parties also. Harmful effects of junk food are explained in detail in another tutorial. Please visit our website for more details. Food during a celebration or at a party does not have to be unhealthy. With a little effort and planning, healthy food can be served. The presentation of the food is important as well. Children are more likely to eat it if it looks good. Thus, food should be colorful and appealing to them. There are a lot of healthy recipes that are delicious and also easy to make. Let's look at some of these recipes. Every kid's party needs a cake. So our first recipe is finger millet cup cake. To make this recipe we will need 30 grams or 2 tablespoons finger millet flour, 50 milliliters of milk, 2 tablespoons melted salted butter, 1 tablespoon cocoa powder, paste of 5 grounded or pounded seedless dates. We will also need 5 chopped almonds, 5 chopped cashews, half teaspoon baking powder, 1 fourth teaspoon baking soda. Procedure Take a bowl and place a sieve on it. Add finger millet flour, cocoa powder, baking powder and baking soda. Sieve everything together. To this add melted butter and mix well. Now add milk gradually and make a smooth batter. Add the paste of dates and mix again. Grease the cupcake molds with some oil. Pour the prepared batter into the molds. Add chopped nuts on top of the batter. Add half cup of salt to the pressure cooker. Place a stand inside the cooker. Make sure not to add water in the cooker. Preheat the pressure cooker for 10 minutes without a whistle and gasket. After 10 minutes, place the mold on the stand. Close the lid and cook this for 25 minutes on a low flame. Check if they are cooked by inserting a toothpick. If the toothpick comes out clean, remove them from heat and let them cool. If it does not come out clean, 
cook for another 10 minutes. Once cooled, remove them from the mold and serve. The next recipe is baked sweet potato strips. To make this recipe, you need 1 medium sized sweet potato, 2 teaspoons oil, half teaspoon red chili flakes, half teaspoon chaat masala, salt to taste. You can even add oregano to it. Procedure Wash and peel the sweet potatoes. Cut them into vertical sticks. In a bowl, take oil and other spices. Put the sweet potato sticks into this bowl. Now, coat the spices on each stick evenly. Place a sheet of butter paper on the baking tray. Put the sweet potato sticks on it with the distance of half inch from each other. Preheat the oven to 200 degrees. Bake them for 15 minutes. Flip the sides and bake again for 15 minutes. Bake sweet potato strips are ready. Our next recipe is curd and pomegranate lollipop. To make this, we will need 100 grams or 1 small cup curd, half small cup pomegranate seeds. Procedure. In a bowl, add the curd and whisk it until smooth. To this, add the pomegranate seeds and mix well. Pour this mixture into popsicle molds and freeze it for 4 to 6 hours. If you do not have a mold, you can pour it in a glass. Place an ice cream stick or spoon and freeze it for 4 hours. Remove it from the freezer. Dip the mold in warm water and demold. Curd and pomegranate lollipops are ready. Our last recipe is Roasted Bengal Gram Powder Butter Milk. To make this, we will need 2 tablespoons roasted Bengal Gram, 2 tablespoons curd, Salt to taste, a few washed and chopped mint leaves, a pinch of cumin powder. Procedure Grind the roasted Bengal gram into powder. In a bowl or glass, whisk the curd until smooth. Add 1.5 tablespoons of roasted Bengal gram powder to this. Mix well without any lumps. To this add one glass of water and mix again. Add a pinch of salt and cumin powder and mix again. Transfer this to a serving glass and garnish with mint leaves. Roasted Bengal gram powder buttermilk is ready. All these recipes are rich in protein, good fats, calcium, folate and magnesium. They are also rich in iron, potassium and phosphorus. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you for joining. Welcome to the Spoken Tutorial on Nutritious Vegetarian Snacks Recipes for Children. In this tutorial, we will learn about importance of nutrition in children, preparation of some snacks recipes for children. Childhood is a period between infancy and adolescence. It is a period of rapid physical and mental development. During this period, Children must eat a wide variety of nutritious foods. This will ensure that their growing body's requirements are met. Inadequate nutrition during childhood can have some adverse effects. For example, restricted growth 
and poor immune system. There can also be a risk of various nutritional deficiencies. For example, anemia and rickets. Hence, it is important that children eat nutrient-dense food. They should be encouraged to eat healthy food from a young age. Let us look at the preparation of some tasty and nutritious snacks. Our first recipe is yummy sorghum and soya dosa with sesame seeds mix. To make this recipe, you will need 1.5 tablespoons of soya bean, 2 teaspoons of sorghum, 2 teaspoons of split black gram, 1 teaspoon fenugreek seeds. To make the sesame seeds mix, you will need 2 teaspoons roasted Bengal gram, 2 teaspoons split black gram, 2 teaspoons sesame seeds, 2 dry red chilies, 1 sprig curry leaves, salt to taste. You will also need 1 teaspoon oil or ghee. Wash and soak sorghum, split black gram and soya beans for 8 hours. Soak fenugreek seeds as well in the same vessel. After 8 hours, grind them into a smooth batter. Transfer this batter into a bowl. Keep this bowl in a warm place to ferment for 7 to 8 hours. After it ferments, heat a pan. Dry roast red chilies and curry leaves till they become crisp. Keep them aside to cool. In the same pan, roast split Bengal gram, split black gram and sesame seeds. Roast them until they turn light brown in color. Keep this aside to cool. Once cooled, grind them into a fine powder. We will use this later. Now, add salt to the fermented batter and mix well. Heat oil or ghee in a pan. Pour the batter and spread it evenly to make a dosa. Once the dosa is partially cooked, add 2 teaspoons of the prepared powder over it. Cover with the lid until the dosa is cooked. Yummy sorghum and soya dosa is ready. If sorghum is unavailable, you can use barnyard millet or foxtail millet. Instead of soya bean, cow pea or chickpeas can be used. The next recipe is Bengal gram chatlets. To make this recipe, you will need 50 grams Bengal gram sprouts, 40 grams or 1.5 tablespoon curd, 1 small shredded carrot, 1 small finely chopped onion, 15 grams or 1 tablespoon roasted gram flour, 20 grams sesame seeds. You will also require half teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 teaspoon chili powder, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste, 2 teaspoons oil or ghee, salt to taste. Before we begin, I will tell you the procedure for sprouting. Wash and soak Bengal gram overnight or for 6 to 8 hours in water. Later, drain the water and tie Bengal gram in a clean muslin cloth. Keep it in a warm place for 6 to 8 hours and allow it to sprout. When the Bengal gram sprouts, pressure cook them for 3 whistles. Keep it aside until the pressure is released and allow it to cool. Next, take them in a bowl and mash them well. To this, add onion, carrot and roasted gram flour and mix well. Now, add spices, salt, ginger garlic paste and curd. Mix all the ingredients and make 4 balls out of it. Flatten the balls into cutlets. Coat these cutlets with sesame seeds and keep it aside. Heat oil or ghee in a pan. Shallow fry the cutlets until both sides turn golden brown in color. Bengal gram chatlets are ready. 
If Bengal gram is not available, you can use mot beans or cow peas. Green gram or soya bean can also be used. Next recipe is sprouted cow pea paratha. For this recipe, you will need 1 fourth cup wheat flour, 2 tablespoons sprouted cow pea, 1 tablespoon sesame seeds, 1 green chilli, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds, half teaspoon turmeric powder. You will also need salt to taste, 2 teaspoons oil or ghee. First, using a mixer, make a coarse paste of sprouted cow peas with green chilli. If the mixer is not available, you can use a stone grinder. Heat oil in a pan, add cumin seeds and then sesame seeds. Saute till they change color. Add the cow pea paste and saute for another 2 minutes. Then add salt and turmeric powder and cook for 5 minutes. Keep it aside to cool. I will now tell you how to make a paratha. Take flour in a bowl. Knead a dough out of it by adding sufficient water. Flatten the dough using a rolling pin. Place the cowpea paste on the flattened dough. Cover from all sides. Dust some flour and roll it into a paratha. Heat a pan and cook the paratha on both sides by applying ghee or oil. Sprouted cowpea paratha is ready. Instead of cowpea, you can also use moong or green peas. Our next recipe is delicious sprouted moong wrap. For this recipe, we will need half cup sprouted moong, one fourth cup malted finger millet flour, one tablespoon Bengal gram flour, one fourth cup crumbled paneer, one tablespoon chopped onion, 1 tablespoon chopped tomato. We will also need 1 fourth teaspoon of each. Turmeric powder, coriander and cumin seeds powder, cumin seeds, curry leaves powder, drumstick leaves powder. Other than the ingredients mentioned, we will also need half lemon, 1 tablespoon of oil or ghee, salt to taste. First is the procedure to prepare powder of curry leaves and drumstick leaves. Wash the leaves and dry them in shade. Later, powder them in a mixer or grinder. Store the powder in a clean and dry bottle. To prepare the malted finger millet flour, soak finger millet overnight. Later, tie them in a muslin cloth and keep it in a warm place for 6 to 8 hours. Once it sprouts, dry roast the finger millet sprouts on an iron skillet. Allow it to cool. After this, grind it using a grinder to make flour and then keep it aside. Heat oil in a separate iron pan. Add cumin seeds, dry spices and powders. Add chopped onions and tomatoes and saute till they become soft. Next, add sprouted moong and let it cook for 10 minutes. Add paneer and salt. Cook for 5 to 10 minutes. Add 1 fourth cup of water and allow it to cook for another 5 to 10 minutes. Turn off the flame and allow it to cool. Now add lemon juice and keep the mixture aside. Next, mix the malted finger millet flour and Bengal gram flour in a bowl. Add lukewarm water and prepare a dough. Now, roll out round parathas. Cook the parathas on both sides on an iron pan. Place the paratha on a plate and put moong mix in the center of the paratha. Roll them into a wrap and serve. If moong is unavailable, you can use mott beans or kidney beans. The next recipe is sprouted soya bean cutlet. 
Ingredients required for this recipe are 1 fourth cup soybeans, 1 fourth cup split Bengal gram, half beetroot, 1 fourth cup boiled peas, 2 tablespoon roasted peanut powder, 1 teaspoon roasted gram flour. Other ingredients required are 1 teaspoon coriander powder, half teaspoon red chili powder, half teaspoon dry mango powder, 2 tablespoon sesame seeds, 1 teaspoon oil, salt to taste. Begin with sprouting the soya bean as explained earlier in this tutorial. Remember to wash and drain the soya beans 2 to 3 times daily until sprouts appear. This will avoid spoilage of soya beans. It may take around 3 to 4 days for soya beans to sprout. Once the soya beans start to sprout, soak the split Bengal gram overnight. Strain it the next day in a strainer. In a pressure cooker, cook split Bengal gram and sprouted soya beans together. Add 1 cup of water and cook until 1 whistle. Allow the pressure to release and then let it cool. Blend soya beans and split Bengal gram together to make a thick paste. Now, take the thick paste of grounded soya beans and split Bengal gram in a bowl. Add grated beetroot and boiled peas. Then add roasted peanut powder and gram flour. Add the rest of the spices and mix well. Now make small round cutlets out of it. Coat the cutlets evenly with sesame seeds on all sides. Heat oil in a pan and cook the cutlets on both the sides. Soya bean cutlet is ready. If soya bean is unavailable, then cow peas can be used in this recipe. The next recipe is tasty finger millet dosa. To prepare this recipe, you will need 1 fourth cup or 30 grams malted finger millet powder, 1 fourth cup or 30 grams split black gram, half teaspoon fenugreek seeds, half teaspoon roasted flaxseed powder, 1 tablespoon curd, salt to taste, 1 teaspoon oil or butter. Prepare the malted finger millet powder using the procedure mentioned earlier. When the powder is ready, keep it aside for later use. Now soak split black gram and fenugreek seeds for 3 to 4 hours. Grind it by adding some water to make a smooth batter. Now add finger millet powder that we prepared earlier. Also add the roasted flax seed powder in the batter. Add curd and salt, then mix well. Cover the batter and keep it overnight to ferment. Once the batter rises, you can add a little water to adjust the consistency. Heat oil in a pan and spread it all over using half an onion. Drop a spoonful of batter to the pan and spread it in a circular motion. Cook on slow flame on both the sides. Tasty finger millet dosa is ready. Instead of finger millet, you can also use pearl millet or sorghum. Our last recipe is raw mango and crunchy peanut salad. You will need 50 grams or 1 small raw mango, 1 tomato, handful of roasted peanuts, handful of coriander leaves, 1 lemon, 1 green chilli, salt to taste. I will now tell you the procedure. Wash, peel and de-seed the raw mango. Chop the raw mangoes and tomatoes finely. In a bowl, take the chopped raw mangoes and tomatoes. Add peanuts, green chilli and salt. Squeeze one lemon on it. Mix well. Raw mango and Crunchy peanut salad is ready. 
you can use any seasonal fruit instead of raw mango to make this recipe all these recipes are good source of various nutrients include these recipes in your daily diet for good health this brings us to the end of the tutorial thanks for joining